Good evening and salutations, my bold and beautiful fans. You know, I feel like Eric's new name should be Mr. Vague. Because for a good 14 minutes, I... <sighs> he pissed me off yesterday. Pissed me off yesterday. Because he went into this grand speech. Now, if you watch this, like if you watch both of these episodes back to back, that means for a good nearly 45 minutes, he just danced around what he was going to say. Now, I, um, I pretty much said to his character, and I was listening to the watch, and I was like, you have one job. Please, please, please pass this test. Okay? We're going to call this the test of manhood. I think I need to start adopting that test to a couple of these other shows, but... Does anyone want to sit there and take a guess if this man passed or failed? failed. He failed. I sat there watching this and I'm going to be honest, like, I was like this. The whole time he was sitting there saying, well, I got to honor my commitment to my wife and I was like, first of all, oh, first of all, I I'm pretty sure HR should have something to do about this. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a movement for this. You know, it's one, it's one thing if you want to sit there and decide, you know what, this woman's important to me, I don't want to lose her, we, we can't really sit there and be friends, we can't really do this, just playing devil's advocate, um, because I'm, I'm gonna, I'm really sniffed there trying to ignore the fact that she is demanding this, that, and the third. That you had no problem both times being with another man. But okay, fine. You want to sit there and commit? You want to, you know, commitment thing or whatever? Okay, cool. Um, I, I disagree, but whatever. But then you're gonna sit there and fire this woman? You're gonna fire her because she gave you a boner? This, this, your, your wife is upset that you got aroused by another woman. And so, y your train of action is to fire this woman. You live in L.A. I, I, what, what are you going to do when you walk, when you, when you leave the house? This is so wrong for so many different reasons. I <laughs> I don't want to sit there and keep harping on the same subject, but I just don't understand how, again, <laughs> you failed the test, but you didn't just fail. You failed spectacularly. You, you... <laughs> I feel like I should start having a new segment called Who Failed the Worst? We're gonna have the men, we're gonna have the women. Because I'm gonna be honest, this guy, he, he, mm. You caved in to your crazy ass demented wife who clearly isn't getting a job done in the bedroom. Ian just caved, but you actually sat there and you <laughs> pretty much called a, an HR nightmare. And again, without actually Smith there saying this, I'm pretty sure there's a movement against such things like this. We got laws against things like this. I don't give a damn if he's... De I, listen, I'm not going to sit there and try to get into, like, 
I don't care if he's like the legal, like the owner or whatever, but I'm like, there, there's rules in place for situations just like this. Did you forget that? Then again, I, I think he kind of forgot actually how to have a conversation because it took him about 14 minutes to sit there and tell her this. And of course he let what I like to call the compliment sandwich, but you know what, I'm just gonna just I'm so, I'm so annoyed at that scene, but I'm going to move on, I'm going to move on. Let's talk about Hope, Finn, and Steffi. So Steffi comes in there, Steffi's not playing, Steffi's like, yo, listen, I don't need you to sit there and tell him, you know, give my man all these crazy ideas about him having a relationship with that psychotic-ass woman, pretty much. She goes off. She goes off on, on Hope. And Finn, I, I don't know if he failed the, the, the test. Because he didn't sit there, you know, I mean, listen, any, any person in their right sense of mind would be like, first of all, you're not going to sit there and speak to me like that. Okay, I'm not one of your kids. I'm a grown-ass man. What the hell is wrong with you? Or something along those lines. But, um, I guess he wants to sit there and play the diplomat peacemaker or whatever. And he's like, whoa, it's, it's not really that simple. It's a lot more complicated. And then she still goes off on both of y'all. And then she's like, well, I'm not trying to be, hold on, not right. I'm not trying to be harsh or controlling. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you just hear yourself? You're not trying to be harsh or controlling, but you walked in and you practically was like, yo, listen, you stay out of my damn marriage. You stay away from your damn mother. But I'm not trying to be harsh or controlling. I wonder what, what, ver what, what is her version of being harsh and controlling? Because the truth of the matter is, I understand where Steffi's coming from. I understand where Steffi's coming from. But her delivery... Is trash. It's it's terrible. You come across like you just own this man. And are they like stepsisters, Hope and, and Steffi? Are they related in, in some in some ways? Like I'm I'm kind of I don't really understand how their relationship works. Um, but they talk for a little bit, and then you know Steffi's like, you know, listen, you need to leave the room, and me um, and Hope need to have a talk. Finn's like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But I feel like when I go out the room, I'm going to hear a bunch of screaming and things being thrown around and hair pulling. I, I, just, I don't know if that's a good idea if I should leave the room. But, um, you know, Steffi's like, no, we'll, we'll be fine. And she pretty much just tells Hope, listen, I don't care if you want to have a relationship with your, well, with your, with your father. But don't sit there and be putting any ideas in this head. Stay away from my damn, stay out of my damn marriage. Period. Now it's kind of funny having them both sit there and say stay out of each other's marriage or her say, sir, her say that. And they both were um, going out and, and doing whatever with, with Liam, but whatever, fine. And the last part is the two Logan sisters. Talking about everything except for what counts. And that is, I don't know, cops, restraining order, our poor dear sister. Nah, we're just going to sit there and talk about, I mean, in the beginning, you know, um, how was her name? Katie was sitting there talking about Carter, like, oh, I guess he left. I had a really amazing lunch date. Okay, so I guess they're going to be getting together at some point. But they just sit there and they sit around and they talk about how Donna is better for Eric than um, Quinn. That's all they do. That's that's literally their whole conversation. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like Brooke. And this is coming from a person who hasn't really been watching this show that long. And I can understand why a lot of people do not like Brooke. Okay, I get it. I get it. Um... Katie, some people don't like Katie. I kind of see Katie as the lesser of 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 the evil as far as 
you know, the Logan sisters. Um, but yeah, that's that's what you sit there and do. They just sit around, acting like they're in high school, talking about their sister, hooking up, or being with some guy, and that's it. <laughs> I love how they was like, oh, well, you know, I can understand why Donna's all shaken up. I mean, you know, Quinn is crazy. That's it. That's that. That's that's okay. That's that's your takeaway. She's crazy, and I understand why she's shooken up. Not hey. Maybe we should sit there and do something to protect our sister. Like I don't know, the cops or HR or something. And by the way, I do love how. I mean, granted, I don't think that Eric knows the way that um Quinn confronted. But to be honest, it doesn't matter. I mean, it wasn't, it, it, I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, maybe it was sit there and change his mind. No, he decided to um, fire her because she gave him an erection. So, I, I don't really know if I could sit there and trust him to make rational decisions. Such as, you know, maybe I need to sit there and get this girl under control. I mean, I can't really have this going on in the workplace. Nah, I gotta sit there and fire her for getting, for getting an erection. Of course, this man lives in LA, in LA but, uh, you know, whatever, it's cool. Um, it's, 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 it's fine. It's totally fine. I'm not gonna lie, when I first start, when I, when I first finished watching this, I was gonna be so angry. I felt like I was gonna come at this review so angry, just kind of yelling and cursing and uh, just like... I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm frustrated as hell. Again, like I said, when I sat there watching this, I was just like this. Because I'm just like, I can't believe what came out of this man's mouth. I, 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 I... <sighs> Eric. Making us men look bad. But sometimes you gotta sit there and laugh at the stupidity. The utter stupidity of the things that go on in the show and just kind of realize... It's a soap opera, and um, well, it's a soap opera. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much about it. It's a soap opera, so um, I think that's about it. Um, I'm gonna go. I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, and yes, I feel so much more better than yesterday. I was well. I guess that's what happens when you only get an hour of sleep, and um, I'm not on one of those five-hour energy drinks. Tea. Tea is my new source of energy. Um, and yeah, so with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank everyone for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Um, let me know what you thought of Eric's decision. Or as I like to sit there and call him, Mr. Vague. Okay? Mr. Vague. Okay, I'm done. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.